Welcome, everybody. We'll be getting started here in just a second. All right, we're gonna go to get started. We've got a really special guest today and I'll be introducing him here in just a second. And today we're gonna to be really talking about uh, AI and how AI can 10X productivity, uh, specifically for product orgs, product teams, product managers, and how you can be utilizing AI today and how someone like Mustafa, who is very trained and experienced in introducing AI into product organizations, what are the best practices? What should we all know about introducing AI into our workflows? And so a little bit about Mustafa is that he has over 20 years of product leadership experience. Most recently, he was the head of product and innovation at Google, a company we're all very familiar with. And prior to that, he led IBM's product transformation practice and served in several product leadership roles at Deloitte and Fidelity. Currently, he runs a consultancy that's focused on helping product orgs adopt AI so they can 10X their productivity. You can follow him on his newsletter, echo-point.com. And if you're looking to master AI for product management and project management work, you can check out his bootcamp and we'll provide the links uh, so you can learn more at the end of our uh, webinar today. And so Mustafa, really excited to have you here and we're gonna jump right in. We've got some really great questions that I'm Perfect. eager to hear your thoughts on and, and jump in. And so yeah. to start off, how are PMs using AI and what tasks can they automate? Ah, it's perfect. First of all, Ryan, thank you for having me. This is great. I'm so glad to be here. I'm actually very excited. <laughs> um, I can talk about this till the cows come home, so to speak. Um, but I think that's a great question. Uh, let me see if I can answer that um, in two ways. So I think PMs can, there's, there's three categories of high level tasks that PMs can do with AI. Uh, the three are number one, and I'll go into more detail. First is generation, second is analysis and research, and third is sparring. So when I think about generation, think about things like writing requirements, writing, features, writing user stories, writing test cases, writing personas. There's a whole bunch of things that PMs can do with AI. The second one is analysis and research. And analysis could be as simple as, you know what, um, you can analyze um, customer feedback. You can take a look at the app reviews and have AI analyze it and tell you what customers are telling you or not. You can actually analyze um, the ticket information that you're getting from, from users and customers to tell you what they're thinking. You can take user interviews and you can analyze them across not just one interview, but a whole bunch of other interviews. AI is really good at the analysis piece. And then of course you add that to the research in which you start combining AI and web. And now suddenly you have a really powerful assistant to help you with market research. So it can actually crawl through webs, create summaries for you, do the market research for you and your competitors. And it can, it can really help you basically save time. And the third one is actually sparring. And this is where most PMs are, are still new to it. And then when I say about sparring, a good example is imagine if you have to go present to the board or present to the CEO or present to the CTO. You can actually really take your deck. You can load it into AI and you can say, I'm presenting this audience. What type of questions? am I gonna get asked? Or how can I make this deck more better or powerful? So you can use it as a sparring partner. You can actually even use it as a way to analyze your PRD. So you can actually upload your PRDs and actually have AI assess it. And it can tell you where your PRD is lacking and how you can improve it. And you can use it as a coach as well. So that sparring piece 
is really important. Um, and that, by the way, is just like the tip of the iceberg. Right? I mean, <laughs> Ryan, when I started this about a year, year and a half ago, I probably had about 20 or 25 tasks that I felt comfortable automating with AI. And when I see comfortable, I have a very high bar of quality. So the responses have to be uh, of high quality. Earlier this year, that number was probably about 60. Today, that number is about 100 plus tasks. And by the way, those number of tasks are continue to rise. So as the models get better and better, more and more task PMs can actually outsource or can automate to AI, so to speak. And we can go more into detail. I'm, <laughs> I don't think our audience wants me to list all 100 tasks, but I'm happy to go more as we get into Q&A. Does that help answer that question? Yes, yeah, super interesting. And two follow-up questions there. One is, you know, I think the sparring use case is really interesting. And a lot of people think about using AI to complete a task or to automate a task or to generate some text. When do you see sparring as most beneficial? And when should we incorporate that into our workflows? Yeah, I actually think sparring is a nice way to end a certain task, so to speak. And so um, let's take the requirements of writing PRDs, for example. So AI can actually help you write your entire PRD if you break it up in small chunks. So it can help you write your features, your user stories, your acceptance criteria, and so on and so forth. Then you can take your entire document that you've created. Um, and once you've kind of finalized it, once you've tweaked it, because remember, AI is not going to give you 100% of the answer. It's only get you, going to get you to about 60 to 80% of the way. So once you get there, you, you make the changes, you, you tweak the ones that you want, then you can take that document and then put it back into the AI to have it analyze it against whatever requirements or whatever best practices your organization has, and you can use that as sparring. And so to me, and a, sparring is a great way to end a certain task. So it's like the final check, so to speak, right? In which you say, okay, I'm about to share this with my audience. I'm about to share with the engineers or I'm about to share with the CPO or whoever your audience is. And you can use that um, as a way to do it. The second part of this is that given AI's ability, you can actually have it tell exactly who the audience is. So you can take the same document and say, you know what, now I want to present it to the CFO. And so you can have the AI act as the role of a CFO and talk about what are the questions the CFO is going to care about, so to speak. And so you can really get, you can really take sparring to the nth degree, so to speak. It really helps you prepare uh, really well, especially if you're new to PM or product management. And so it will really help you round out uh, your skips. Awesome. Love that. And you mentioned a hundred plus use cases at this point. What are, before we move on, what are two that maybe are less obvious that everybody should start using today? Oh, this is a good one. Um, <laughs> I actually do think that the, um, you'll be surprised how well AI can do analysis, right? And I know we're going to talk more about this, but just the ability, like, you know, we talk about needle in the haystack, right? AI is very good at finding the needle in the haystack, much better than us humans. And so you can take the analysis piece to the nth degree. And especially when I take my PMs through this, just the idea about transcribing your user interviews or your research interviews, and then having AI actually read through it and find out what it is that they talked about, what are the features that they want, what are the things that they don't like. And then using that same, using that not just across one interview, but 20 interviews, right? And it can really do that very fast, so to speak. So I think I really, really like the, the analysis part. And then um, the second one, which I think be, or which I value a lot in AI um, is the creativity part. If you know how to use AI as a creative partner, and especially when it comes to brainstorming features, so to speak. And you know, we always get our organizations, our PMs are always blamed in organizations that you know what they don't think enough outside of the box, uh, and we need to be more creative. We need to be more innovative. And with AI, if you know how to use the creativity part it actually can really give you ideas that you've never thought about. And this is where actually hallucination in AI is actually your best friend. Because hallucination is just another word for creativity, right? And so if you, can, if you can know how to prompt it correctly, it will give you a whole bunch of features that you may never have thought about. Um, 
And then you can evaluate them. You can figure out which ones you want to take it forward and which ones you don't. Awesome. Love that. And I love the, the positive outlook on hallucinations. <laughs> I haven't heard that before. You know what? Like anything else, it just depends on how you use it. So. Exactly. Moving on, why would you say PMs are using AI and what would you say the main benefits are? Yeah, I think that's great. Um, I think it really comes down to, um, actually, let me ask that answer that question two ways, right? So if, let me talk from a PM perspective and then let me talk about it from a CPO perspective because I think both are important. Um, so if, on the first one, on the PM side, it really comes down to what I call three things, right? So first one is just, the most obvious one is saving time, right? The AI can do your task 80% faster than you can. And what that really means from a PM perspective is that you know you can you can automate some of your tedious tasks or most of your tedious tasks, which gives you all of this time to do the things that matter. So you can be more strategic, you can do focus on things like innovation, or frankly speaking, you can just get a better work-life balance or have dinner with family. So it really is saving time. The second part of this is really what I call, it really helps you exceed expectations of the stakeholders. And that is either by delivering a work product that is of better quality, because AI can do great if you know how to train it, how to format it. So it will give you work products that are much better quality uh, than before. It can actually do the creativity part, which we just talked about, or the part in which you can actually upskill yourself. You know. PMs who have only two or three or five years of experience now with AI can have 20 years of experience, so to speak. And so you can really help um, exceed expectations and deliver high quality products. And the third one, which is my personal favorite, is um, it really prepares you for the future. Listen, Ryan, whether we like it or not, AI, AI is going to change the way we work. Right? And so by learning how to master AI, by learning how to automate your work, you are doing, at, at the very minimum, you're future-proofing your career so you're not left behind. Or I actually think that you're actually making yourself more marketable for the future because that's just the way things are going to work, right? Um, and then that's at the PM level. But then if you, if, you, if you zoom out and if you look at it from an organization level, that's when you get the 10x benefit, so to speak. So uh, if, you're, if you're a CPO, think about it this way. All that time savings that we talked about, what that translates into, extra capacity. That means extra capacity without actually heading, adding any headcount. And if you look at some of the data of the, of the research that I've done on the case studies that I've built, is that for every 20 PMs, if you use AI, you're adding two extra headcount without doing anything, so to speak, right? So extra capacity there. Second is, by improving the quality of work, you're actually reducing rework. And so that's a huge amount of savings, especially, I mean, how many times have we gone to our engineering team and said, no, that's not what I meant, or no, we missed this requirement, or no, we need to go back and do this, right? With AI, you can actually reduce that. You can't reduce it by 100%, but you can reduce it significantly. Um, and that reducing of rework actually re improves acceleration of of your product development time. So you're accelerating product development time. And the last one is just the innovative and creativity part, so to speak, which is really, especially now when you have such powerful tools, the only real limitation to what you can build is what you can think what you can build. And so you can use AI for that purpose. Awesome, super helpful there. Now I'm gonna skip ahead here. I wanna make sure we save some time for the questions at the end. And so, I want to dig in a little bit further into analysis and how PMs are using AI to do analysis. Could you expand on that and just share more about, you know, the tactical takeaways, the tactical yeah. suggestions that, you know, we can all incorporate today? Yeah. I, I think the analysis part is, is so critical. And when I think about analysis, I think about it in three different or three categories of three steps, so to speak. The first one is that just gathering data. Right, so that's step one. Second is analyzing data, and third one is actually doing something with that data. AI is really good at the middle, but the gathering of the data is still a pain in the you know what. <laughs> and so, even something as simple as pulling information down from an app store for reviews is still a very manual process, so to speak. Um, and so, 
if you can combine some of the best practices that we actually have in which we can actually do the data and the pulling of the data and the storing of the data, then use AI to actually analyze that data on a regular and frequent basis. And then have the AI give you recommendations, so to speak, on what to do with it. I think you really are creating a powerful workflow, so to speak, right? Right now it's still broken and we're still a long way to go. Uh, but if you combine those three things, you are really now taking your analysis to the next level, right? Um, even if you even if you think about um, if if you're if you're a customer centric organization who are always listening to customers either through app feedback or through interviews or through market research, you need that process, so to speak, that will give you at the end, hey, these are the kind of features that I think we need to build based on what we're hearing, and AI can help you do that. Awesome. And you mentioned the, the collection of the data. And so that's the most challenging part and how is. AI is, is really great for the middle layer, the analysis, and also the solutioning, the sparring, you know, at the end, can AI ever replace the user or getting that data from <laughs> users? And what would be the yeah. problems of, of replying um, on AI in this context? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And in fact, I get this question all the time. Like, oh, do I really need users if I can just talk to the AI? Um, Unfortunately, no, and that's not how AI works, right? If you think about the way AI works, AI is just, for a lack of a better word, a very sophisticated probability matching machine, so to speak. It's not there to take the place of the user because all it's doing is just matching words based on probability. Um, but what it can do, it can really help with the entire piece around the user. So for example, you can actually go in and say, here's my hypothesis, help me come up with interview questions for, for, my, uh, for my users. So it will help you do that. You can actually then take those interview questions, then you can actually ask the user those questions. AI can record it. You can then record it and then you can analyze it. And then from the analysis, you can actually write the features. So everything around the user you can, but you cannot replace the user. And plus, I don't think so you ever want to replace the users because remember, they're the ones who pay us. <laughs> uh, so I wish... Uh, I, well, I, I, I have a feel. I wish that we could use more and more of AI to do some of this stuff. But frankly speaking, we probably don't want to do it. Right. Got it. And absolutely agree there. Uh, big believers here and really talking to customers, deeply understanding what they think and using AI to really take their perspectives, analyze that data, translate that data into solutions, yeah. Yeah. Um, but not really replace the authentic yeah. conversations, the authentic yeah. data set that um, AI would not really be able to yeah. accurately predict today. Yeah. And I've had some people, some PMs say, oh, you know what, I'll just ask the AI because it's a collective knowledge, so to speak, because that's the, that's the conversation or that's the feedback I get. And I'm like, it's not really a collective knowledge of the user. And plus, you know, if you talk to 10 users and you show them a certain feature or you sh share with them your, your product spec, you're going to get 10 different answers, right? Which is going to be very different and what the AI is going to give you. So it's just generic stuff based on pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, zooming out a bit, how do you think PM's roles will change with AI? And you really talked about, you know, you need to be incorporating AI to stay ahead, to be marketable. How will that role change as AI increasingly becomes more prevalent? Yeah, I actually think that there is... Um, I think there's three ways it changes, right? So, and I've talked a little bit about it. So number one is just allows PMs to be more strategic, right? A lot of us, at least when I joined, became a PM, it was really there to do the innovation part, be quote unquote, the CEO of the product. And somewhere along the lines, we've kind of lost sight of that because we've been so bogged down with the tedious work. Um, and AI allows us to free all that tedious work so we can be more strategic. Um, second is more about blending of roles. Now you can actually use AI to be, to be your sparring buddy or to your SME on not just product management, but you can actually use that for user research and UX. You can use that for engineering. And so you'll see these three roles. We always talk about three in the box, right? Engineering manager, the product manager, and the UX uh, manager. You can see all of those kind of roles blending into each other. I don't think so that we'll ever get rid of those roles, but they will see more and more cross-pollination, which is actually a good thing. And third, in my opinion, is that we're going to need more product managers. 
and not less. And the reason I say that is if you think about where the trends are going, right? There's a lot of investment right now going into using AI to do the coding and the building. And if you, if you look at that in five years from now, the coding and the building is gonna be easier and easier. And when the coding and the building becomes easier and easier, do you know what becomes harder and harder? Deciding what to build. And guess whose job it is to decide what to build? It really comes down to the product managers. And so in the future, I see more and more people moving towards product manager is deciding what to build, understanding how we solve the user problem becomes more and more important because the building part becomes easy and easy. It is interesting too, just seeing the rise of coding uh, gen AI solutions as well. Yes. And I've seen some uh, early stage startups, the CEOs are writing code with the help of AI. Yeah, and so it is be, really turning everybody into an engineer. Yeah. I mean, if you look at any organization, the biggest cost has always been the engineering part of it, right? Which is why um, that's where most of the budget goes in. But once that becomes easier and easier, once you actually don't need, I mean, some of these large organizations I consult with, it can take anywhere between 18 months to two years to build something out. Um, if you shrink that down even by half, so to speak, now suddenly they can build a lot more, but building a lot more is never the answer. <laughs> building the right solution is the answer. And so you'll need more and more PMs who are better and better at the stuff that we just talked about, which is understanding the customer, the empathy part, building stakeholder relationships. I think that's where they become more strategic and we'll need for more of those skills. Awesome. Last question here, then I'll be jumping into the questions that we've got that are submitted. So uh, I encourage you, submit your questions below. We have a submit question option here in the Zoom window. Uh, you can also drop them in the chat if that's easier for you as well. Uh, but I got some really great questions from the audience so far. I'm excited to, to dig into those. Um, but last question here that we've got prepared for you is how can PMs get ready for AI? I think that's a great, ah, that's a great question. Um, I think the first part is just getting your hands dirty. There are PMs out there who are a bit shy by using AI. They're worried about putting some data in, um, the best way to use AI is to get your hands dirty. It is easy to use. There's lots of things that you can do with AI. Just start simple. Like the most simple part is just help AI write you the next email. Start there, right? Forget about the more higher tasks like writing requirements and so on and so forth. You can get there, but the first part is just understand the cadence of working with AI. Because AI, in my opinion, is a lot like an intern. Once you understand how the intern works, you can give it more and more sophisticated tasks. The second part is don't try to do this alone, right? Join a community. There's lots of meetup. In fact, I just got invited to a meetup in, believe it or not, in Paris, who wants to do our, who is running an hackathon on how to use AI for a product manager. And so find these meetups, find these people, find these communities and do it with them because you're, you're sharing, oh, or you, sorry, your learning is going to go exponentially as you share what, you're, you're doing and others are doing, so to speak. Um, and third is if you if you like what you've heard so far, follow me on echo point, echo point.com. I share a lot of tips, a lot of guides. You can do that. You can always join my bootcamp. Um, but regardless of which approach you take, the key is to start now. And I say start now is because in my opinion, if you learn how to use AI now, you're going to be ahead of the because most PMs are not there yet. If you wait for a year, year and a half, you'll be at the curve. And so you'll be there where most PMs are. And if you wait for two or three years from now, you're gonna be behind the curve. And you never wanna be behind the curve, right? So now is the time to start. If anything, get your hands dirty, go, go, to, my, um, go to my newsletter. There's a whole bunch of prompts and scripts. I actually have a whole library of scripts that you can use. Um, and just start playing around with it. You want to write features? There's a script there. You want to write a persona? There's a script for that. Um, but that's the best way to do it is to understand and and um, and play with AI. I love that community suggestion. And you know, you're you're learning things. I'm learning things. Everybody here yeah. is learning things. You know, and the more we can exchange those ideas, exchange those yeah. best practices, it's really going to advance. You know, the 
the thinking around AI, the use cases around AI together. And so really great on the, the meetups, the community, yeah. you know, engaging and, and learning online. Jumping into the questions here. And it's the first, just a lot more fun, right? Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. More fun and share best practices. Yeah. And, you know, attending webinars like this, learning yeah. from folks like yourself. The first one here, and this is probably something that's on top of everybody's minds, is really around privacy concerns. And so what are the privacy concerns of dropping a slide deck or a PRD or NDA? Uh, you know, um, if it's not yeah. blocked by NDA or even just co secret company information. Yeah. Um, and so love to hear best practices there, concerns, how you work around that when you're really working on something that is uh, more sensitive. Yeah. So number one is that there are certain things you probably don't want to share with AI. So your financials, so to speak, or things that are sensitive to the public, you want to be careful with. Second is if you use the free version of chat GPT or any of these models, so to speak, remember the data that you're sharing is data that is used to train the model, so to speak. So over there, you probably want to be, you know, you can use for brainstorming, you can actually have the right requirements. You can actually do a lot of things like interview questions and so forth. Those are all generation tasks, so to speak, that I talked about. I think you can use the free stuff. The analysis stuff, you can do that too, because again, you're just taking public information and you're actually using it for analysis. When you start getting into the paid version and the enterprise versions, that's when you start getting more of the security features and the benefits that go into AI. And so even if you just do the enterprise version, so to speak, then your data is actually not used for training. So none of that data is, is going to be used to train the model, and so they don't save it. You do have to still share the data because the AI needs something in order for it to react to, so to speak. So you want to be a little bit careful about what you do. So if you actually have a secret sauce, you probably don't want to share that. Um, what you also have to remember is that it's not like, you know, the way AI works is it's not like it's taking a document and actually saving it word to word. When they say that they're training they're training the model on the document. What they're really doing is training on the relationship between words, so to speak. So if you, you know, and so that's how you're doing. So you have to be a little bit careful. I always tell people, don't share financial information because you never know where, how that's going to go. But the generation piece, the sparring piece, by the way, um, if you don't want to share the slide deck, you can just say that I'm going to the meeting with this type of topic and who is the audience. These are the kind of questions they're going to ask if you have a business review meeting. You can do that, um, but as you get to the enterprise levels, I feel more and more comfortable sharing that information. Right, and awesome. I think Microsoft Copilot has some really good security features too. Agreed. I did notice in Microsoft uh, GPT Plus at the OpenAI version, um, you it by default it does train the models, and so in the settings, I recommend everybody yes. to check your settings and turn that off. Uh, because by default, you are training the models unless you turn off that setting. Yeah. So, uh, and that, that's I believe okay. that's in the paid version too, right? That's in the paid version. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. How about top three mistakes or pitfalls PMs should avoid and how? Yeah. Um, the first one is, frankly speaking, um, the first one is what I talked about is trying to avoid AI together. <laughs> Please don't do that. Use AI as much as possible because this is the future, um, so to speak. Second is more around, sometimes PM ask an AI to do a lot. And so for example, um, I've had PM say, well, you know what, why can't the AI just write a PRD for me? And so say, you know what, here's what I'm building. Can you please write a product requirements document? for me? And I think for an AI, that's a very complex task. Because there's so many things that go into PRD. If you think about your PRD document in most organizations, that's at least 10, maybe 15 sections in a document. And for, the, for AI to recreate that and give you high quality responses is very hard because it just doesn't have all the context. A better way to do that is to break your PRD into smaller tasks and what I call micro tasks. So just start with brainstorming features and have AI do it. And you know you can, do, you can give AI those things that, that are important in a feature, like who is, who is the user, what problem you're trying to solve, what's the outcome that you want, uh, what's the, you know, um, 
what are you trying to build? You can give them some basic information and then have them give you lots and lots of options about features. And based on those features, you can then help you write user stories. And based on the user stories, it can help you write a acceptance criteria, a negative acceptance criteria, and so on and so forth. So this, the second piece is try not to give AI complex tasks because you will be disappointed. But if you break it down into what I call micro tasks, you get much, much better results, um, so to speak. And the third one, I believe, is where I see a lot of people um, using AI is that they really is this, they're really not using that sparring piece that I'm talking about because it can really be a great benefit, um, so to speak, right? And even if it's even even if you just want to check your own work, even if it's not about presenting anything, um, I think you are going to have. If you can, if you start using AI correctly, you can really, I mean, I go to AI first for everything, right? It's almost to the point of which that if I have to do any kind of brainstorming, if I have to do any kind of checking or sparring, that's, that's the, that's the piece that I, that I go to. Awesome. Super helpful there. We've had a few questions about tooling and products. And so what are the tools for doing these tasks and how do you use them? Yeah. Um, so I think there's a lot. There's a lot out there, to be honest with you, and it really is task specific. I usually first start with the basis, and when I say basis, I have like four. First of all, not all LLMs are created equally, so I use different LLMs for different tasks, so to speak. So I use Claude for analysis because it's really good for analysis. I use ChatGPT for generation. Um, I use Perplexity for market research. Um, and so you can use different LLMs for different things because each one has a key capability that I use it for. Um, so that's number one. And number two is then when you get to much more sophisticated tasks, like what, you know, like Ryan, what you're talking about with the data collection piece, the analysis piece, and the recommendation piece, there's a whole bunch of tools out there. Of course, there's the Sprig. There's a whole bunch of things that you can use for writing your decks. There's a whole bunch of things for UX, UI. And so I think... I think I must have probably seen at least about 100, 150 PM tools out there for each trying to do each little thing one at a time. Um, and I think it's great for you guys to use the tools if it works for you. My recommendation is first understand how to use an LLM by itself without actually going to have any interface, because that will give you a, a feel of how these things work. And then start using the tools, because then tools can really accelerate. Uh, your workflow. Awesome. And we'll be having a Sprig demo here in just a second. So if you're curious about how to use AI to build better product experiences. I'm actually looking uh, forward sit, to sit it. Tight. I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen your demo yet. So this is going to be awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm curious here. We've got a question from, um, about using AI to upskill and find their next PM role. Um, this individual specifically wants to go into being a PM for machine learning products. And so what are some ways someone can upskill and really find that role in maybe a slightly different role or, um, or type of, you know, industry or field from where they're at now? Right. I think I, if I understand the question correctly is how do you position yourself so that you can get that role is, I think is the intent of the question, or are we saying how, um, Probably more, I mean, how about we focus on, yeah, the positioning as well as the upscaling. And yeah. so really getting those skills, if maybe yeah. someone's not getting them today, but also the positioning as well. Yeah. Um, so I think the upscaling is, I think AI can help you, help you a lot with upscaling. It can literally be your personal coach, so to speak. I've had, I'll give you an example. I've had new product leaders, um, who've just been promoted have been using AI to actually help them become better leaders, so to speak. So for example, there was a leader, there's one of the leaders that I'm coaching in which she's using AI to, um, to have difficult conversations with her PMs, because this is something new to her. So she puts in AI and the AI actually gives her a whole way to actually um, a whole agenda of how you can deal with this certain situation. So AI can really be a coach, a very task specific or scenario specific um, event 
And so if you want to be a better leader, if you want to be a better PM at a certain area, if you want to be better at market research, if you want to be better at, at product discovery, you can really use AI to actually help you. And the more specific scenarios you give you, the better the response is going to be. And then you can use that as, again, you can have a conversation with the AI. You can tell that, you know what, please take on the role of so-and-so coach and help me with this situation. So the upscaling part, um, AI can definitely help. But that's only part of it, right? The second part of that is that you actually have to do the work, <laughs> so to speak, um, because that's where the getting your hands dirty really helps. Um, and so you can have AI kind of help you point in the right direction. It can actually save a lot of time because now you're not just trying to say, okay, this is what I think I should be doing. Now you can say, this is what I think I should be doing. Let me ask AI and see if there's anything else that I should be doing. And so it can help you save time. So it can cut down your learning time. Um, and then as for the positioning piece, um, you know, given the job market that we're in right now, it is tough. And the best way to show that you know what you're doing is to demonstrate that you know what you're doing, right? And so I know a lot of PMs, this is where joining the community helps. This is where you can actually showcase how you're using AI to actually help you do PM work or how you're using AI to build PM products or even build um, simple demos. And I think showing your work is the best way to position in this market. Because a lot of people can say I have, you know, they can say that I have done AI or they can put that on the resume. But in reality, what's going to make you stand out is the fact is that you've actually seen some of the stuff. And by the way, certifications help too, right? So you can always get an AI certification, so to speak. But again, I always look for, let's show people what you can do because it's much easier to have a much better and much more fruitful conversation during the interview itself. I hope that answers the question because there was a lot of, a lot of questions embedded in that one question. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, it was really great having you today and, and all the questions that you answered. I know a lot of you are curious about tools for product managers. You know, how can we leverage AI uh, in our daily workflows? And so I'm going to turn it over to Denise from the Sprig team to share more. Great. Well, thanks both of you for going through that. That was incredibly insightful. Um, with that being said, we are going to jump into the Sprig product demo here. So switching tabs here, but keep the interactions coming you know as we present this demonstration of our sprig product offerings please feel free to use the q a section or again enter any questions in the chat but really focusing our efforts here on really how we can put ai up in the forefront and really have ai again recommend and analyze all of the data collections that you can do within Sprig. So this is essentially the Sprig platform. This is the homepage. Think about this as if you're a day-to-day -day user, how can you really get the most top of mind insights across all of your studies directly again uh, for forefront in the homepage here. So we'll start to highlight and recommend um, either correlations or opportunities around any of the insights that you're gathering within Sprig. So I saw a lot of in the chat, again, how the teams are doing this in a manual way today. So really think about Sprig as that AI assistant analyzing the survey data for you. And then how we get here. So starting off in our new study tab here, we do have over 70 plus expert created templates, really again, built with best practices in mind, great way of brainstorming new ideas, but really these templates are to help assist you for any in product survey. So being able to capture insights and questions directly to the user as they're interacting with your web or mobile application, but then you can also see different features that Sprig offers such around heat maps, being able to see again, heated areas where most interactions are, replays, being able to record the user in the moment, and then lastly, that ever present feedback button. Right now we'll start off with our in-product survey example, and then how we can actually attach a session replay to that in-product survey. But first, without actually going into a template, let's say, you know, I don't really know where to start. Maybe this might be a little overwhelming. Another piece here is we can actually create 
a study draft or multiple ideas with AI assisting. So here I can go ahead and click on it. You can enter any custom use case in mind. So what is your top of mind idea that you want to learn more about? We also have suggested prompts here, depending on your product. I'm just going to select this one as an example. And then what this AI is doing, it starts to analyze all of the templates that we have, again, built with those best practices, looking at your specific use case. And then here we'll see it's recommending three specific study drafts or study examples based off of my use case goal. So do I want to understand onboarding feedback, starting off with a close-ended question, asking an open text, and then following up with an open text? Do I want to gauge and um, measure that onboarding experience to see how overall users are interacting with the product? And then lastly, just understanding onboarding challenges. Are we seeing major drop off? How can we make this process a lot more you know, easier to use? And again, feature that um, conversion rates as well. Let's just move forward with this. Um, this first one is an example today, but really one of the key values of Sprig, especially if you're thinking about putting anything in app or in product, the level of customization that we offer is really one of the huge value adds and one of the reasons our customers love Sprig. So you can really fully customize the in-product surveys to match your branding. You can remove the powered by Sprig, change the font size, font color, and really again, make it feel like it's a part of your branding there. Next, you'll see here, I even if I do select one of the pre-created suggestions from the Create with AI, I still have full control of changing the wording. That again, these are built with best practices in mind. We also even offer advanced skip logic in here, being able to redirect the user to a different type of follow-up question depending on their rating. Once your questions have been set up, we'll move over to the audience tab here. And another really big value out of Sprig is we're a one-time level of install. So once you get your engineers involved at the very beginning of utilizing Sprig, your team is then empowered to run in-product surveys, replays, heat maps, or that feedback button without having to go back to engineering. So we've gotten a lot of customers transition from other tools and really, again, has been a huge value add to, again, that product development lifecycle, ramping up, again, the process there. So from here, once I select my delivery platform, I'll move over to the targeting and again, we're really focused on this hyper-targeted action. So if we're measuring this onboarding experience, I'm going to pull from a product analytics tool that teams are utilizing. So whatever product analytics tool your team is currently utilizing, we're just sending that information over to Sprig, and then you would see this drop-down list to select from. And then for this example, onboarding process, I'm going to choose that end or final action that's non-disruptive to present that in-product survey directly within that in-app experience. Sprig also offers what are called no-code events or URL options, specifically for web, so making it even more easier for you and your team so you can specify a very specific page URL. We do also even support um, in inner text. So here I can select no-code. We can select an inner text field or even a design element. So again, different ways that we're empowering teams to, again, not involve engineering and target these in product surveys, replays, heat maps, and feedback buttons directly within the Sprig UI. Other features as well as targeting, so think about that end action that's going to trigger the survey. Other pieces of data that you can select to send to Sprig are any user attributes or user segmentation. So how can I already filter results from this data collecting method to again, surface in the results page. So do I only wanna gather insights from, let's say a specific plan type? 
And I want to see how, you know, maybe our free plan or starter plan trial is more likely to convert users moving forward. So you can really see how Sprig makes it really easy for you to target users within the UI, but also we can get really intuitive with utilizing those events. We can even calculate specific actions for you and get even more advanced in the targeting. You can also even measure a B tests within Sprig. So really think about all of the different ways that we can get really advanced in this in-app survey targeting that Sprig offers. Well, great. So that's essentially the first product offering. Like I mentioned, really here, this is really where we're taking this next level innovative approach of combining the replay with an in-product survey. So how can we really get this holistic view of the user's sentiment response, but also play back those actions that the user was taking directly within the moment? So here I can toggle on a replay or attach a replay to an in-product survey. And then again, we're really focused on this hyper-targeted moment. So we'll have up to five minutes here for recording, and then we can record the five minutes before, five minutes after, or five minutes before and after. So again, more context, hyper-targeted recordings. Of course, we care tons about privacy, so your team can fully blur out and block out any user-sensitive information. So it is not being captured by Sprig. We work directly with security teams that, again, this really um, fills the need for, again, any kind of user-sensitive information that needs to be blocked out there. But within just these single steps, you know, quickly being able to set this up within a couple of minutes, I can go ahead and click Launch. And then this is where, again, Sprig is analyzing and really recommending your teams with this data-driven decision-making. So here we can see an example of a survey with a replay. And then really where the AI comes into play is being able to enter a study goal. So what is your goal for this study? What are you trying to understand? Is it to identify pain points, um, ease of use, just feature satisfaction? This study goal will allow the AI to generate a very catered summary. So again, easily being able to digest the survey data. How can we do more of the heavy lifting for you? And again, focusing your time on more of that strategic, either again, creativity of feature development, feature improvement. Um, so summarizing those uh, the study results for you. Sprig does tend to see a higher response rate, anywhere from 30 to 40%, really, again, due to the level of customization that we offer, how catered the question feels, and the event targeting that we offer. And then down here, this is where we could see the survey results. So again, if we're pairing that replay with the survey, I can dive into specific responses. For this example, let's say I do see a high response rates of unsatisfied users. Why is that? How can I drill deeper into these results? I can click watch here. And then we can see and play back those user actions. So I can see hard to find what I wanted, but what specifically were they looking for? How can I play this back and actually dive deeper into results? So we're really doing, again, more of this innovative approach, not having to sift through thousands and thousands of clips. How can we find the most meaningful sections for you? And really, again, it's really exciting for our customers, huge value out of combining both the replay with the survey there. And then if we're still taking more survey questions specifically for open text, this is really a huge value add and why a lot of customers switch over to Sprig is our AI model, our AI model is not trained to do a keyword search or word cloud approach. We're really looking at identifying key themes of the grouping. You can always change the themes. You can always go into individual responses. And again, if you attach the replay, you'd be able to play back the recording as well. But really, again, seeing Sprig as the collecting tool of analyzing, and then again, the AI of Sprig is analyzing all of the survey data and then providing AI recommendations or, again, highlighting these potential opportunities for improvement. So going back to you know what Mustafa said is how can we really find that needle in the haystack moment? having Sprig AI really analyze and do that heavy lifting for you. So that way your um, teams as PMs are focusing more on that creativity aspect or being able to identify new product development um, to focus on.
You can also ask an AI chat. So again, any concerns around privacy into these public, you know, GBT aspects, if you don't want to pay for that paid plan, Sprig has the security built in for you. You can ask questions directly about the survey itself within here. And then if you did attach a replay, we also provide replay themes. So we'll start to analyze the AI. We'll analyze all of the user clips and then start to bucket them into specific categories for you. So again, way easier for your team to digest and analyze this data. I know, Lauren, that's very shocking and very cool. Lots of excitement here. Tons of value. And again, this is available for web applications, websites, and mobile apps as well. So any mobile application can have this feature as well. Awesome. So last feature here that we wanted to showcase before we wrap up today is our newest release, which is our heat map functionality. So being able to, again, see interactions and heated areas on a specific page, very similar format. We can use the event or a lot easier, this URL page. So I can simply paste a very specific page URL. I can choose to only gather heat maps from a specific group, like that user attribute, or completely leave this open and gather from everybody. And then in the analysis, I can filter by the specific group or user section as well. But really where Sprig really differentiates from other tools in the space is being able to also attach the replay. So having the, the heat map being presented, but also toggling on the replay feature. So I'm gonna showcase an example here of what a heat map with a replay would typically look like in the analysis view. So here we can see, I still have the option to enter that study goal. What is my goal to understand around this heat map? Again, being able to have the AI summarize all of the key findings for me. And then down here, I would see the heat map data presented on our example site. So if I click on a specific area, I'll see statistics around that. But if I attach the replay, I can then dive deeper into that specific page or heated area to see, again, any commonalities around users' interactions. So tons of excitement. We have a lot of customers utilizing this feature and, again, seeing the value of combining both the heat map with the replay um, within Sprig. We also present a click map that can be presented. So we look at all of the clicking interactions. So all of these are individual clicks. And then I can also dive into a very specific clip and view the replay data there as well. So tons of functionality that we provide really, again, having this um, sprig collecting methods of all of the different offers of the features um, around in product surveys, replays, heat maps, and feedback. And then the Sprig AI is analyzing and recommending any new um, potential avenues for you. So that way, again, it's 10 times easier for you and your team there. Awesome. And, and, and thank you, Denise. And totally agree that this is a great use case of AI for product managers, really that middle layer, like Mustafa's talking about the analysis, as well as really the solutioning. And in many cases, Sprig is making recommendations to improve the product experience. And in this case, the product manager is a sparring partner. So the product manager is the one actually challenging those recommendations and saying, hey, AI came back with five suggestions to increase my onboarding conversion. And I'm going to actually challenge those suggestions. I'm going to review those suggestions and actually determine you know, which ones we want to carry forward. We did get some questions here that I want to jump into. And one example um, that I'll start with is how does Sprig compare with Hotjar? Yeah, great question. Um, so really the differentiating and the main um, differentiating point between Sprig and Hotjar is our mobile app component. Hotjar does not support any mobile applications. So Again, that's another value add. Um, overall, just the combination of, again, the in-product survey with the replay, the heat map with the replay being another really 
different, more innovative approach to tackle on the collecting method. And then lastly would be, um, well, actually two more, the customization that we offer for any of the branding. Sprig is way beyond that for Hotjar. And then lastly would be the AI analysis, just our AI methods of the summary, the AI insights, the creation with AI, and really where we're taking it to the next level um, is really where um, we we are different than than those two. Awesome. And we, you mentioned the summaries. We've got a question about those as well. Can you share more about how the summaries are generated? Yes. So our AI is essentially looking at all of the summary data for you. So how, how many questions are you asking? What types of questions are you asking? And then it'll start to summarize just top key findings. So it'll start to see any of those common patterns from the open text questions, the rating scale or multiple choice. And then if you attached a replay, again, we'll do those replay clips. Um, but if you entered that study goal, that will generate that AI summary. So we have it either catered to a very specific goal um, that you entered, or again, just analyzing the summary in general. Um, typically, that's that's what we're looking for there. I don't know, Ryan, if you have anything else to add there. That was great. And Denise, where can we learn more about Sprig? Yes, great question. So we do have this QR code presented here. So if you do just want to pop up your phone and just scan this really quick, you can schedule a sales demo um, to learn more, especially if you have a very catered or specific use case. We can definitely provide very catered solutions um, for you and your team, showcase our different features. We didn't even showcase the majority of Sprig features there. Um, so you can even just go to our website. I also run a weekly demo as well. If you're ever interested in, and don't want to commit too far, that's always an option as well. Awesome. And I know we have a question here about for the Shopify extensibility. I would, Denise, where could someone learn more about specific capabilities and whether those are on the roadmap? Yeah, great question. I would recommend you reaching out to scheduling a demo or talking with a sales rep. We can definitely work with you and our engineering team to see what solutions um, we could offer. Awesome. We'll wrap up there. Thanks everybody for joining us. Mustafa, it was a pleasure having you today and learning about how to 10X productivity for product managers. I encourage everybody uh, all of you should be using AI into your product development process. Check out sprig.com. We have a free plan for you to get started today. Uh, you should be analyzing the data. You should be having AI coming back with solutions and recommendations on how to improve your product experience. Uh, our goal is you get promoted. Uh, so our role with AI is to give you the data that you need to analyze the data for you to provide specific and actionable suggestions to improve your product experience uh, so that you have the information that you need to build an award-winning product experience. Uh, so check out our free plan at sprig.com. And for anybody who's post product market fit, post a seed round, your company is growing, uh, it's, it's seen success. We have our enterprise plan uh, really for companies that um, are, are really series A and beyond. Uh, so our enterprise plan starts at around $10,000. Uh, and so it's a, on an annual basis. And so once you're starting to get that initial traction, you're ready to really understand your user experience. Uh, check out sprig.com slash sales slash demos. Uh, book a time with our team. You'll see Denise there. She can go uh, dig in specifically into a personalized product demo and get you set up with one of our annual subscriptions and you'll be on your way to using AI uh, and 10Xing your productivity. Thanks for joining today.